Hello everyone, my name is the Mad Scorpion and welcome to a very, very busy week in Destiny. Starting off, we have another hotfix. I will cover the details of that hotfix a little bit later. But starting off, we have Grandmaster Nightfall's launch on top of double rewards and rank 4 strikes. Plus, Master Salvation's Edge and Salvation's Edge Challenge and the launch of, of course, the fix of Dual Destiny, but I'll get into that in the hotfix notes. Starting off the bat, the Nightfall available this week is actually the Glass Way, which is a bit of a rough one for most people not used to Grandmasters, but for those of us who have been in the playlist for a while, imagine this will just be old hat, we just gotta get through it. On that note, they are also launching a brand new weapon, first time available for Adept. It is the Scintillation Strand Linear Fusion Rifle, which has some nifty looks to it of course linears are still in an odd spot it's hard to say they're damaged meta but here's to hoping this actually has a way out of the meta for the crucible on top of that for labs it is doubles clash 2v2 a unique game mode in the labs playlist and 6v6 it is control and rift for competitive 3v3 it's the usual countdown 3v3 and Rumble is 1v6, free-for-all as usual, but it seems no Iron Banner but Trials this weekend as always. For the Rotators, our current available exotic mission is actually the Star-Crossed mission from last season, which is the Wishkeeper exotic mission, which I imagine would also come with some of the weapons from last season in summation. Although I have been noticing a weird thing that the updated ones from last year, the two exotic missions, mainly Avalon and Wishkeeper, those two missions don't have a pinnacle that launched with them. I haven't checked personally, but that has been something I have seen. In addition to that, the raid for the Vaulted Glass for the farming raid. I know I said that a little weird, but that also means that Master Mode is available. All challenges are active. You can farm out one boss infinitely for the specific time lost role you want. However, again, there is no crafting from the Vault of Glass, so you would literally just be there hunting for collection pieces, trying to get Vexmith the Clast, or just trying to get the God Roll time lost weapon. The farming dungeon this week is currently the Prophecy Dungeon, which still fresh off of a loot refresh could actually be worth going through, not to mention soloable and the pinnacle it is kind of worth it just for the solo player it won't take too long but at the same time like i said new loot but onto salvation's edge it is the launch of the master mode which does have a variety of new challenge modes that we don't exactly know what they are yet i don't have the lock on that but it does come with of course i imagine extra shields some champions as well as surges in this version in addition to the permanent surges that should be already active and an overcharged fusion rifle and I imagine this runs the same as Crota's End did, where it's on a knockout system, earning an adept weapon of all the variety before starting to get duplicates. Hopefully that's the way they did it, but then again, I do not know for sure. The current master mode cap is actually 2010, which if you have been keeping up and you're anywhere near 1900, you're already kind of in the running for getting it done. If you're already at 2000, you're pretty much on par for making this a quote, on light activity. In addition, it is strength focused armor for the master raid this week. Speaking of raids, going through the rest of the list, Crota is Conservation of Energy, Root of Nightmares is Crossfire, King's Fall is Golgoroth, Vow Disciple is Defenses Down, Deepstone Crypt is Atrax, Garden of Salvation is to the top, and Last Wish is Forever Fight, just keeping that quick and clean. And a straggler activity, the Dares of Eternity, is Hive Vex and Ballast to Auric for the Cabal. Checking on the seasonal side, there has been one or two varieties of Enigma Protocol that have appeared. I do not know for sure if it is just two or if we're going to be getting more. So keep an eye on Enigma. It does back and forth between the one or two difficulties. I know first week was Vex. The second week was the same thing, but taking that time. So keep that in mind. And as well for Breach Executable, I am not sure if this goes through a new region for sure, but I imagine this does have new details regarding the new seasonal stuff, which I of course will cover the new seasonal story in its own respective video. Cutting over to the Eververse store though, we actually also have something else going on here, where if you didn't see on launch, if it actually is appearing somewhere, it's actually not, but there is a Resurgence bundle currently active for season 11. They didn't mention it right off the bat, but there, e there should be a few things from Season of the Arrivals popping up that you can be able to access. I am not sure if where it would be, but I know I did see the pop-up saying it is currently active. So if you want that nice Wither Horde ornament or anything from the Season Pass of Season 11, I would recommend keeping an eye on the Eververse store as things come around. But aside from that, the Bright Dust selections. For two shaders, we have the first being Time Honored from Season of the Risen, which doesn't look half bad. It looks very cabal to say the least but it doesn't exactly look very shiny 
And we also have a Blaze from last season, which if I recall was available uh, to a Bright Dust Bundle, but is one of those live shaders that initially took the Ever Restore by storm, but of course is now here for Bright Dust, so might as well grab it while you can. We also have Unspun Fate from Season of the Deep, which is basically you spawning out of a Strand Decoy. And as well for all the classes we have from Season of Opulence, the Hunter or the, I should say, the chest plate ornament for all three classes of the respective types. Moving on as well, there is the Thinking Headache Emo from Season of the Plunder, which this is your average dealing with the fourth encounter on Salvation's Edge. And into the big store for some shaders, Celestial Dome from Forsaken. Very nice and bright if you just want a clean white look to go for a white knight look. And as well, Welded Brass, which is a personal favorite of mine for a Void setup, especially my Void Titan, just because obviously it's a dark grays, brown, dark tones with a nice purple glow. Next is Reef Regalia, which makes you look very Reef Awoken. If you had never seen what they dress like, this is their exact same color scheme. And Cursed Azure from Season of Plunder, which is a unique look, which almost fits more like you would be in Grasp of Avarice, sort of, but also with a weird color palette to add to your clothes. For Transmats, we have only the finest, which is, of course, an old one from Black Armory, a weird kind of just root system. Dark Blade Effects from Season of Opulence, which is spawning out of a Hive Sword, not a Dark Blade's Axe, ironically enough. And Virtuous Entrance is a weird form of Vault of Glass Oracle, kind of, or just Vault of Glass Throne. From there, the big ticket items, Spray and Pray, an emote from Season of the Risen that I'm sure many people have seen around, which is basically you just messing around with a machine gun and shooting up in the air Rambo style, which I don't think it ends until it, you hit it. So, you know, it just kind of ends like that. Crab Core, which um, is an interesting name. Uh, I imagine uh, it has a meme reference. I'm not sure if this would be the uh, Crab Rave reference, but I don't think it is. Then we also have Prometheus OSP from Season of the Risen, which is basically just a, uh, I would say, an Exodus Black style uh, escape ship. A uh, more traditional astronaut look. The Terrain Sidecar, or Terran Sidecar, which is a Sparrow from 30th Anniversary, which if I recall is just the Station Wagon Sparrow, but it is lagging behind on the spawn of visuals, so I may just come back to that. The ROV Shell from Season of the Deep, which is basically a deep sea rover, I would imagine, of something. But it also looks like the Ocean Gate submarine now that I look at it. And with Space Time Weft, a Leviathan's Breath ornament from last season. A very Tron, sleek, 90s, techno-style look for Leviathan's Breath on our favorite heavy bow. And lastly, as always, a Braid Tech projection for... Which, I'm not going to lie, if it was just the After Effects, I wouldn't mind that. But, you know, Ghost Projections are a dime a dozen. And double-checking on the Terran sidecar is not spawning. So, moving on from there, that is pretty much the broad shoulders of the reset update. Lots of things going on now, like I said. Double rewards, double ranks, launch of Grandmasters, Master Raid of a new one. There is lots to do, lots to see, lots to get done. So, I'd recommend you get onto it. With that, I will leave you off with the patch notes. I will see you in the next video, and I apologize if the transfer sounds a little weird. Getting right into it on the 0.5 update for Crucible. Fixed an issue where incorrect expansion was required for Trials of Osiris. Fixed an issue where Trace Rifles had incorrect ammo. Campaign and epilogue option now available for Excision if you wish to just watch the end cinematics without playing. And fix an issue where players could matchmake into the campaign narrative version of Liminality after the first boss encounter. For Dual Destiny, like they said, they fixed an issue where it was possible to earn double exotic class items. So now, if you wish to farm, you either have to run the mission over and over again or just go for all of the chests in the Pale Heart. And honestly, as much as people are annoyed that they fixed this, it was a bug. What do you expect? Bungie's gonna fix it. Duh. But aside from that, cooperative mission focus. Fix an issue where cooperative missions were not unlocking correctly. For raids and dungeons, they removed the surges for raids and dungeons, but added a worldwide blanket buff so that now all surges are currently active. So keep that in mind for your loadouts. Seasonal activities. Fix an issue where these piston hammer charges were being reset daily instead of adding a charge. Uh, of adding a charge. This fix applied uh, midweek shortly after the last update. Gameplay and investment fixed an issue where Storm Grenades was receiving 40% more energy than intended from perks that granted instant percentage chunk energy such as Devour or Armor Mods. Again, I saw a friend of mine was annoyed that they fixed this, but again, it was a bug. What do you expect? For armor, fixed an issue where precious scars could trigger from final blows with kinetic weapons instead of solar on a solar subclass. I wish I knew that. Weapons, fixed an issue where repost would only drop as a fixed weapon roll after completing your placement matches. 
Updated the fixed weapon roll to drop with the perk Desperate Measures instead of Golden Tricorn. In a future update, instances with Golden Tricorn will be updated to Desperate Measures. Fix an issue where the Sword Wolf Pack round hits could activate Relentless Strike Sword perk for Ergo Sum. For quest, fix an issue on the new light quest on the offensive required completion of Vanguard Ops Bounty. Fix an issue where player was unable to dismantle Dyadic pr er, Prism after obtaining Ergo Sum on an alternate character. Fix an issue where collecting encryption bits with the full inventory would block a player from acquiring the Kvostov Exotic. Pathfinder. Replace Ritual Pathfinder Gambit nodes with a general node on some cards. There should now always be a path that can be completed through PvE only or PvP only. There we go. Fix an issue where Ritual Pathfinder objectives involving banking notes did not track correctly. Fix an issue where resetting the Paleheart Pathfinder reduced the number of Ergo Sum drops available from without providing the item if the player had not yet unlocked Ergo Sum. Fix an issue where the Urban Parkour objective in the Pale Heart Pathfinder did not update once the stitching activity was complete in the Lost City outskirts. For emotes, fix an issue where players could sometimes be killed shortly after using the Final Slice Finisher. Fix an issue where all players would not see the same results when rolling the DMD emote nat 20. For performance, fix an issue where VFX for prismatic class screens could cause an overheating issue on Xbox. And for general fixes, fix an issue where the rank 16 rep for the ghost had incorrect shader, and players who already received the reward will keep it and automatically grant the updated shader reward upon login. And fix an issue where the Bungie reward director dialogue image was not properly scaled. And that is everything in the hot fix notes for this update.